Hi, I'm Nan Simonson. You're going to see on my videos that I talk about whole food, plant-based eating. And in my book, Aging Powerfully, the whole point of that is that it's just one of the lifestyle choices that we make in order to age with power, not under somebody else's power, not under medications, but under the steam, I'll call it, of our own vibrant health. And we do that with great food. Whole foods, plant-based has been proven to be what our bodies run best on, but whatever you eat, just add lots and lots of fruits and vegetables, grains, legumes, and seeds and nuts for additional health. I'm gonna to talk today about something I call my almost free soup. I love having soup. My husband's crazy about coming home to a bowl of warm soup, especially in the colder weather. This is February. And I wanna show you how I make it, how I made it. And that's why I'm doing this video. I just made it and I am thrilled um, to be able to put away two and three meals for the two of us out of something that was almost free. What do I mean? First of all, the broth that went into it, a quart of broth, came from this bag. Something like this that I keep in the freezer all the time and throw in scraps. Carrot peels. This is the bunch of um, carrot uh, stems, um, carrot leaves. We go to a farm store, we buy the carrots, we keep the leaves. That's the carrot stems. There are stems of green onion. There are uh, roots of green onion. There is the um, seed pack inside of a red bell pepper or a green bell pepper. Pull that out and the membranes, that goes in there as well. I'll probably add some carrot to this since I don't see any carrot shavings. And the carrot actually makes the broth just a little sweeter. I even use leaves of cauliflower, not too many heads, but a few, or maybe one, because that's almost cabbagey. Uh, not too much because I don't want an overly cabbagey broth, and, and I'm careful about that. In addition, I was inspired to do this because I had a container of aquafaba. Aquafaba is what you have left when you cook garbanzo beans, actually any bean, but it's usually referring to garbanzo beans. I have a video showing you how I do in my Instant Pot a couple of pounds of garbanzo beans that I can freeze and they stay separate in this one quart bag. And I was able to get three one quart bags filled with these garbanzo beans that I keep putting into a container to defrost and putting in salads and putting in hummus and um, making a egg salad type sandwich out of garbanzo beans. That video will come up later. In any case, so I had aquafaba, about this amount of it, left from my making the garbanzo beans. I had my broth out of vegetable scraps. All of this was free. If I bought it all, it would be oh, a lot of money to be buying stock that way. Uh, Salt-free if you want it that way, a little bit of other seasonings. I put bay leaf in, but you can watch the video on how I make the stock. And then put them in a pot. But I like to, when I use onion and garlic, I like to bring in a caramelization. So I did, and you don't have to do this, but I did in this pot put one big chopped onion and, mm, gosh, four carrots, three um, celery stalks, all uh, diced. And then I sauteed them, dry saute, adding a little bit of broth if it started to create too much browning or too much uh, sticking so that I could get a bit of caramelization, a bit of an additional flavor. But again, you don't have to do that. You can just throw this all together. And then I, put, I had the carrots, I had the celery, I added um, uh, butternut squash, and I added potatoes, four potatoes. I had a bag of potatoes and they were starting to sprout. Don't eat them if they're sprouted, shrivelly and green, but these had just started to sprout, russet potatoes, scraped off the sprouts, chopped up, uh, maybe it was three potatoes, not four, put those in and um, let that cook until they were slightly tender. Then I added a couple of zucchini, the things that are more tender that I wanted to stay uh, in 
uh, in one piece, um, not get too soft. So I added a few zucchini, go through your refrigerator. Uh, I added some zucchini, I added some um, of the cauliflower leaves that I chopped up. You don't have to throw those away. That It was like adding cabbage to it. And I added a bag of one pound bag of um, uh, uh, oh edamame. It could have been green uh, green peas. Uh, I could have added green beans at that point. Anything I had in my refrigerator. Oh, added a chopped up red bell pepper. Let that cook until they were tender. And look what I got. I got a beautiful soup that when served with plenty of broth, plenty of flavor. Oh, forgot to tell you, I also put in a can of um, tomatoes, of diced tomatoes. I happened to have one that was fire roasted, which adds a little more flavor. I love to add my own homemade and the recipe is on my website, nansimmonson.com. And um, well, this recipe isn't, but the broth, making the broth is, and the aquafaba recipe is, and that leads you to my cooking channel, and the making the uh, garbanzo beans was also on the cooking channel. One dollop of this wonderful, I call it sour cream, but it's simply silken tofu, and silken tofu is different than traditional tofu because it just has a lot more water in it. And uh, silken tofu um, in one 14 ounce carton, I think it's a 14 ounce carton as opposed to 16, I put three quarters of a teaspoon of onion uh, powder uh, or granulated onion and granulated garlic, same thing, three quarters of a teaspoon, you could use a lot less, two and maybe a half tablespoons of lemon juice, whir it up in a processor or a blender, and it's wonderful. Look at this. Woo! <laughs> That's, sorry. I'm not going to redo this video, but I just poured soup all over my toes. Anyway, let me turn this down. Doesn't that look great? Um, oh, ready to eat it. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> I hope you're having a great day because I'm going to um, take care of yourselves, eat well, feed your microbiome with all the fruits and vegetables, seeds, uh, nuts, grains, and legumes. It's the only thing that your microbiome, those bugs in your microbiome eat and they take really good care of you throughout your body. <laughs> Bye. It's me again. Yes, I cleaned up my floor and I'm back. I wanted to say something I forgot to, and that is that in the last 10 minutes of my making the soup, I put in some chopped dinosaur kale. I also, when I added the zucchini, added some spices that I like. For example, I love berberine. Berberine is an Ethiopian spice that's North Africa, and it's peppery and paprika, fenugreek, ginger, coriander, cumin, cardamom, turmeric, on and on and on. Really uh, savory. I added that. I added a little bit of pepper, a tiny bit of salt, and another spice that I didn't add to it this time, but that I use in my soups and my vegetables is something called za'atar, which is Middle Eastern. It has some of our Mediterranean spices and herbs like oregano and thyme. It also has something called sumac, which has a, just a touch of bitterness, a little bit of sesame seed, and a number of other spices, depending on the blend you buy. So just wanted to bring that up and mention that all of us have different flavor uh, ranges. Because I have been whole food plant-based going on three years now, my taste buds are attuned to much uh, more, um, let's say, food as close to nature as, um, as possible, as opposed to processed foods that kind of hijack your taste buds and make everything demand much more flavor be added. So be aware of that with anybody's recipes, including mine. And I'll say again, make it a great day and bon appetit.